Hello everyone, welcome back to Sierra Science Show channel and welcome to a new video. So for today's video, I wanted to make it really nice, simple, short. Today I wanted to talk about two books that I read last year in 2021. And typically when people do this type of video, they talk about multiple of their best books of the year and multiple of their least favorite or worst books of the year. And I decided that I was going to do it a little bit differently and just talk about the single best book I think I read in 2021 and the single worst book I think I read of 2021. This was mostly in the interest of making a really short video this week after a 30 minute reading vlog from last week. And from two, I actually read a lot of good books in 2021. I think I only had maybe one or two of the books that I read be books that I did not enjoy. So I really don't have a lot of books to like complain about that I read last year. And before I reveal which of the books I'm going to be talking about today for best and worst, both of these books uh, I have reviewed on my blog. So if you want to read a more in-depth reason as to why I enjoyed and disliked these books, you can check out the posts. I will link them in the description below. So the best book that I read in 2021 was actually the last book I read of 2021, and it was none other than Black Girl Unlimited by Echo Brown. So Black Girl Unlimited by Echo Brown is a magical realism young adult autobibliography. It follows Echo through her childhood growing up in the east side of Cleveland, Ohio, um, and it's pretty intense. It's a pretty intense book but has a lot of content warnings for drug addiction, um, rape, um, just like heavy topic. It starts when I think she's about four or six somewhere, a younger child, um, and it follows her all the way through to her first day of university. So it's literally a timeline of her life growing up and navigating all of these really hard and difficult circumstances that she finds herself in. And I really enjoyed this book of 2021, first of all, because a lot of the themes of it um, as a black girl growing up in America, I resonated with a lot. Um, there are, again, more heavy topics of like internalized racism, which is something that I have struggled with in my adolescence growing up and have had to reframe narratives around that and stereotypical beauty in the United States. Um, this book is just really powerful in the dialogues and the social issues that it presents, uh, especially for black girls in America. So I just deeply, deeply appreciated this book. One of the things I enjoyed the most about Black Girl Unlimited is the way that Echo Brown was able to weave the real parts of her life with a magical realism aspect. The magical realism aspect of this book is that um, Echo and people around her are wizards and they are able to do magic. Um, and really it's more so symbolic for intuition, it's symbolic for, um, you know, being able to pick up on people's emotions, being empathic, being able to see other people's circumstances. One of the biggest symbols of this book is the concept of the black veil, and Echo is able to see the black veils of people around her since she is a wizard. And really the black veil is symbolic of really hard and heavy things that keep people weighed down, um, and it's kind of like always floating above someone and Echo is able to see when this black veil is descending upon them and actually like encapsulating them in darkness and bringing them down. Since she is a wizard, she is able to perform miracles and a lot of the miracles that she performs throughout the book is really just stopping time but instilling some kind of wisdom, some kind of hope in the people around her to hopefully lift that black veil and bring them back out of that darkness um, and restore their light. So there are just so many beautiful elements of this book that are beautifully crafted and thought out and very stylistic that helps weave like reality with a magical realism aspect and also be true to Echo Brown's childhood and her life. So in short, Black Girl Unlimited is a magical realism autobiography by a Black author and really the story is all about resilience and being able to tell yourself a different story and create a different narrative for yourself and defy what society expects of you, especially as black girls in America. So if you are interested in that and you want to read more thoughts on it that I had, again, my full review will be in the link below. Okay, and last but not least, I want to talk about my least favorite book of 2021, and that was none other than The Valley and the Flood by Rebecca Mahoney. This book... <sighs> Um, if I had to give a short answer as to why I disliked this book, 
the number one thing that comes to mind is that it was just confusing from start to finish. I did not understand this book at all. The Valley and the Flood was actually published back in February of 2021 and it was actually an advanced reader copy that I got um, digitally through Penguin Teen, through the Penguin Teen Partnership Program. So thanks to them, but it was published in February and I didn't actually finish reading the book until December. Granted that I had a lot going on last year that prevented me from really reading the arcs that I was receiving. Um, but I definitely did drag my feet a lot with reading this book simply because I just didn't understand what was happening at all. I was just looking at Goodreads and I marked this book as started reading back in September and I finished it in December. So it took me like three months to even bother finishing the book. As far as I understood, this book follows our protagonist. Her name is Rose and she is driving through the desert of Nevada, I believe, and she had a best friend that tragically passed away in a car accident. Um, and while she's driving through this uh, desert in Nevada, she breaks down, her car breaks down, and she's standing in the middle of the desert at night by herself, and she, for some reason, hears her best friend's voice. Right before her best friend died, she left her a voicemail, and Rose is actually hearing this voicemail uh, as a broadcast at a nearby radio uh, tower. So Rose is like standing here in the desert, like how am I hearing this voicemail that's only on my phone that I've only ever heard? So she follows the sound of the voicemail that Cassie, which was her best friend, um, left for her to a town called Lotus Valley. And it's here in Lotus Valley that things are just not as they seem. There is weird stuff happening in this town. The Lotus Valley is made up of people that are able to do things that they shouldn't be able to do, like they're prophets and storytellers, and there are also these things called neighbors, but they're not actually people. They're like shadows, but they can kill people, so maybe they're like shadow demons. It was just weird. And also the best friend that passed away, her name was actually Gabby, not Cassie. Cassie is a person that Rose meets when she gets to Lotus Valley. And Cassie is a prophet. She's actually, I think, like the number one or second best prophet of Lotus Valley. And basically when Rose meets Cassie, Cassie's like, you are going to bring a flood to this valley that destroys the entire valley in I think 10 days time or something. And so the plot of the book is really just Rose, Cassie, and a couple other characters that nobody cares about going around and trying to piece together this prophecy to see if it'll actually come true and if they can stop it before this flood is supposed to happen. And if I sound frustrated, it's because I am. It, I picked this book as part of the Penguin Teen Partnership Program to review because it sounded cool. It sounded like fun. I'm like, ooh, a prophecy. Ooh, a flood that will destroy the entire town. Like, I want to know what happens. So I was very invested in figuring out what this book was about. And unfortunately, my entire reading experience throughout this book was really just being like, what is happening? It is literally a series of them going around to neighbors in this town and getting this weird coded message about you should go here and talk to this person next, but don't do this because the prophecy says this. All the elements seem disconnected. We've never really understood or learned why Rose was able to hear um, the voicemail from Gabby. Um, we don't have any kind of resolution in Gabby's death. One thing that I do want to give the book props for its um, representation of is survivor's guilt and PTSD from losing an important person in your life and um, being the one to survive something that you shouldn't have. One thing Rebecca Mahoney does do with Rose's character is really take a lot of time and give a lot of space for Rose's grief for Gabby um, and accurately portraying the flashbacks, um, being able, you know, the sensory experiences of being able to remember what happened the night of Gabby's death and where she was and what happened, what was she wearing. Um, a lot of things like that. In all, that was my best and worst read of 2021. Again, if you want to see more thoughts about why I dis I liked and disliked these books, I will link to my reviews in the description below. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me this week for a shorter video. And if you want a longer vlog, I did a vlog last week reading Girls of Fate and Fury, which is Girls of Paper and Fire number three, the final of the trilogy. Um, so if you want to see my chaos and emotions um, in a longer form video, you can check that one out. But besides that, I will see you all on the channel next Sunday. Bye everybody!